All right, I've been uh, asked to help somebody overclock their um, combination here. So I'm going to see if I can help more than just one person when I make this video. So what we're basically going to do, uh, the guy who needs my help, his name is Pitbull Staffy. Uh, he doesn't have any videos, he's just a person that's around. So here's what we're going to do. Basically, his message says, Hi, mate, I see a couple of your videos for overclocking. Can you give me some advice on the safest speed I can overclock with these specs? As I'm very new to this, my specs are, <clears throat> and then he gives his specs. Basically what he's got here is uh, Asus P5NE SLI, uh, Core 2 Quad Q6600, uh, 4 gigabytes of DDR2800 branded memory. I don't know exactly what this means, we'll go into that later. Um, it's a 650i chipset, sports SLI, and it says he's got a Soprano silver case by Thermaltake. Um, it's not really the biggest thing that I need to worry about. Uh, basically, as far as I've heard from the P5NE motherboards, you're going to need to set as many things as possible in BIOS manually, especially your RAM. So, um, as far as your RAM goes, you said you have 4 gigabytes of 800 megahertz DDR2 um, branded. I'm hoping that means like Corsair or Crucial or something like that. Because if you have generic memory, uh, you're really not going to get any overclock on the memory whatsoever. Uh, I'm not sure if you're really worried about that or not, but if you have premium memory, which I guess it sounds like you do, uh, it should help you get a little bit extra megahertz out of the RAM to where it will make your benchmarks and all that stuff a little bit higher, <clears throat> basically. And also, do you have two gigabyte sticks or four one gigabyte sticks? Because that can make a big difference. Sometimes on some motherboards, four sticks will uh, overload the north bridge, but sometimes it doesn't, and it's just, I don't know, it's crazy sometimes. But basically, um, just for beginner stuff to start out, what you want to do is, if you get online, because um, I'm not exactly sure about this motherboard, it was actually one I was going to look at, but once I heard you had to do all this shit, and it was the 650 chipset, and just the price of it compared to the P35 that I bought just wasn't worth it. So basically what you want to do is go into your BIOS and uh, disable any speed, uh, spread spectrum, uh, PCI speed spectrum, anything that's got spectrum on it. Um, I think they have, I'm not sure how many different, uh, mine has two on it. There's spread spectrum and then there's one for the hard disks I think. I don't even know, I'm not sure about all that, I'm not a genius. But um, other than that, uh, basically, once you do that, disable all that stuff, disable anything else you don't need if you have a wire, uh, um, oh shit, what am I thinking of? It's pretty much just anything. Um, if you, if you don't use your legacy USB, disable that. If you have onboard wireless, which I know you don't, disable that. Just pretty much anything like that. If there's anything you need to know, just let me know. I'll help you out with what to disable. Then on to the processor. Uh, the Q6600, that thing makes a lot of heat, especially when overclocked. So basically what you're going to have to do is if you have stock cooling, I would recommend remounting with Arctic Silver. And if you have aftermarket cooling, then the bigger the better, basically. So here's what I'm thinking. On the Q6600, your best bet would be to download Core Temp see what your VID says. That would be your good starting voltage. I'm thinking it would probably be around 1.375 to 1.325, give or take, could be anything. And um, basically just a good rule of thumb is um, set your multiplier manually, set your FSB manually at the, what would it be, uh, 266, and your RAM, since I'm not sure exactly what it is and we want to keep that out of the persuasion, set your RAM to a one to one ratio, which on yours um, you have linked, unlinked, and like synchronous and all that. I'm not exactly sure how that works. If there's anybody else who has this motherboard that can help out, please do. But um, as far as that goes, I would think run unlinked at first and uh, set it for 800 megahertz or if there's a way to set it one to one to where it will run with the bus, it'd be running at 266 at the beginning. And set it for whatever the rated voltage is. Set it for your rated voltage and the timings 
set it for the rated timings, and if you want to be really safe, um, if it's like 4, 4, 4, 12 or something, loosen it to 5, 5, 5, 15, and that will give you a little headway just to make sure that your RAM is out of the way for the overclock, because basically, when you overclock a CPU, if you're not wanting to overclock anything else, and you just want to see what the highest your CPU can get, you want to take everything out of the equation, like you want to make sure your motherboard has the voltages ready to handle the FSBs, that's why a lot of people will try to find their FSB wall by lowering the multiplier on their CPU before they actually overclock to see where they can get on their their motherboard to make sure that their CPU or you know what what part is is coming into play that's limiting them in the overclock. Other than that, um, with that processor, uh, you're going to want to keep it below 1.5 volts. Um, if you run in water or anything higher than that, which I don't think you are. Uh, you can almost go to 1.6, a little bit higher, but your chip isn't going to last very long. And um, on the uh, temperature, keep it below 60 degrees Celsius for 24-7 operation. If you're just benching it just to get some benchmarks done or something like that, uh, maybe 65, maybe if it hits 70 a little bit, you'd be all right. But yeah, I definitely keep it below 60, 55 at the most for 24-7 for, uh, operation. And as far as how high safest speed that you will get, um, that's a hard one to say. All chips are different. I'm hoping you have the Geo stepping. And if you don't, if you have the other one, which is the B3, then I guess uh, you'll just have to um, just see how it goes. I know the B3s make a lot of heat, but uh, you still might be able to get at least uh, 3.0 out of it. But Geo, you should easily be able to get 3.0, 3.2 on air, I would think. And um, just basically see how it goes from there. Start raising your FSB, uh, 5 to 10 megahertz at a time. And uh, just watch your temperatures. Uh, boot into Windows, run a Super Pi 1M test, or uh, run some 3D Mark tests. And then if it passes that, after you get, uh, once you get to about 3.0, I'd say run like a 12 hour stress test with Orthos. Or uh, Prime 95, which I think you have to run two Prime 95s, or no, I think four with that, unless they have the new one that uh, works all four cores at the same. But I use Orthos or OCCT, I believe that works on dual and quad cores perfectly fine. Other than that, um, the only thing I can think is uh, that I forgot is PCI Express and PCI. Lock those at 100 for PCI Express and 33 if it's not already locked for the PCI and um, definitely better case cooling if you don't have a uh, fan directly on your north and south bridge or on your MOSFETs on top around the CPU definitely get one there because that will cause instability which I am coming to find out with my P5K because it seems like I can run any stress test but then after a couple hours once everything starts to get heat soaked I fail so I don't know what's going to happen with that. I don't know. Maybe it's just me, or I don't know. We'll see. But um, other than that, um, I'm not really too specific on the 650i SLI chipset, but I hope some of the stuff I said will help you out. And if you have any more questions, let me know. I will message you or make another video. If there's anybody else who has anything that can correct me on or help out with this guy, um, just feel free to respond with a video or comments. And uh, thanks to all who watch, and I hope you can get your quad core overclocked. Thanks a lot. It's Rick Carter.